The real title of this episode is Masquerade, but personally, I think it should have been called Dead in Breakfast. No! No, 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 no! Aw, yeah, Mitch is gonna be pissed when I claim the save. <laughs> Aw, she's dead, damn. CJ, you found this one. So it turns out the dead woman's husband was Stephanie's old psych professor, who she apparently was close enough with to determine that, despite overwhelming evidence, he can't be the killer. What was going on there, Stephanie? Were you doing a little extra credit? Somehow, Mitch turns is or isn't Stephanie's old psych professor a murderer into yet another competition. Sam Wright. Uh, but Homicide doesn't agree with me. And they're still convinced Lowry murdered his wife. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm right. Murderer students say what? What? Huh! Garner mentions another, similar case from the same yacht club, which casts doubts on Psych Professor being a murderer and makes Stephanie think maybe pirates robbed and killed them. There are no pirates in Santa Monica. They're all on some island where they tried to murder Hobie, duh! Anyway, Stephanie concocts a plan to pose with Mitch as a rich married couple and lure out the murderous possible pirates. And let's not forget, Hobie's with his mother. Hobie's at Gales. Mitch is sure they'd be recognized at the club, as all lifeguards would be, but Stephanie is the braids behind this operation. <laughs> Foolproof! No one could possibly recognize them with a wig, a mustache, and a tiny dog. It's brilliant! I think my favorite part of this is they made Garner their chauffeur. We'll not have a damn dirty dog in one of my undercover operations! I'm just excited we get a full 40 minutes of Mitch stash time. Danny Trejo, I thought you turned your life around after Eddie saved your life. But maybe the humiliation was just too much to bear. Oh no, could this man be involved with the murders? It's hard to tell, but he might be a bad guy. Okay guys, they don't have to be like pirate pirates. You do realize it's not the 1700s anymore, right? And here we get to Garner and CJ's subplot, wherein they follow Mitch and Stephanie around to try and catch the bad guys. Some of you might be wondering at this point who exactly CJ is as a character. Well, let me tell you something. Other than being new agey, she's whatever the writers want her to be that week. And this time, she's a speed demon, which means that Garner is gonna get seasick a lot. <laughs> End subplot. Say, this wig reminds me that we have a full 40 minutes to kill. And season 3 is killing it with their montages. To be fair though, the Mitch stash is like a trump card. Any montage with it is pure gold. Cool guys, don't look at women singing right next to them. Am I right, audience? Ah, pulling out the Craig Pomeroy stare. Interesting move. Prepare to take a tumble into Mitch Buchanan's horribly muddled mindset. His egregiously long black and white montage made him think that maybe playing a character with Stephanie isn't so bad. He is insulted when Stephanie says he doesn't look good with a mustache, and then somehow mistakes his character Trevor for someone else with whom he can compete. Just to be clear, he is trying to prove that he is better than himself. What, are you saying that you like Trevor more than me? You do. Also, can I point out that when coming up with a name for a suave, rich, and handsome yacht owner, Mitch went with Trevor, the greatest man he ever knew. Not to be outdone in the absolutely petty and pointless department, Stephanie decides that in order to get along, they must remain in character at all times. She proceeds to transform into a rich yacht persona and completely change her mood, like some sort of confused schizophrenic. In turn, Mitch becomes his character, aka Mitch Buchanan with a slightly British accent. I'm right here. <laughs> okay, so our main characters are insane people? Approximately two minutes of screen time later, the bulk of which is taken up by CJ and Garner, Stephanie and Mitch are already blurring the lines between fiction and reality and making out while shoving fruit bowls off the bed. Look, if you say anything to him about this, I will torture and then kill you. Daddy like. Ah, so it turns out the real killer was this yacht salesman, and those obvious pirates were decoys. That sure is a twist that has no bearing on the plot whatsoever. I'm just sorry our honeymoon didn't last ten minutes longer. Ah, really? While Mitch is sent out to collect their valuables, Stephanie frees herself and makes a swim for it. No! No! We need her alive! Actually, by the time he came back and realized I was dead, you'd already have the valuables, idiot. Hmm, good point. <laughs> You call this a net? I'm gonna report you to the wussy net police, you pee-pee heads! Suck it, Stephanie! I liked your rich yacht character better anyway! You mean that mustache was fake? I can't believe he lied to us about something like that! 
Okay, those filthy rats had to have been on this expensive yacht before the thieves arrived. You call these cuffs? Who'd you get them from, your mother? <laughs> My... <laughs> save... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> huh. Hasselhoff doesn't need hands to take out a boat full of hijackers. Suck my dick! <gasps> I was going to save you, idiot! You're the idiot, idiot! Well, time for the post-climax wrap-up. Man, we sure were useless this episode. Gotta go fast. Next time on Baywatch, Mitch and Garner go undercover as basketball players to appeal to a more urban audience. Meanwhile, CJ unknowingly gets involved with a married man. Nothing but net. You got to reach out.